look, listen. We are surrounded by miracles and wonders. For instance, rivers. Born in the snows of the Sierra Nevada mountains, the Yuba River brings life to the Northern California valleys below. How do we know? How do we understand rivers and the life they harbor? And how do we pass that knowledge on to our children? Science is one way. Art is another. This is a music composition class. These teenagers are part of an experiment in learning. They'll spend a year of weekends devoted to both the science of rivers and the art of music. This class at Music in the Mountains is called Young Composers and it's usually devoted to music theory and composition. But this year's challenge is different, to explore the connection between music and river science. Can they compose music that reflects what they'll learn about the Yuba River? And why? What's the idea? There are definitely parallels between math and music, but between science and music, it's not really been explored very well to my knowledge. Let's talk about salmon through music. Let's talk about the rivers through music and see what we can do. And that's how it began. We had a meeting and it's evolved to what it is today. I think it's still evolving. I think the exciting thing is that it's, it's really kind of unknown and these kids are sort of charting that right now. The test will come at the end of the year. Their challenge, to turn river science into music, river music. Rivers are crucial to the history and social fabric of Nevada County, California. Located in Nevada City, two institutions are collaborating to explore the connection between music and science. Music in the mountains and the Sierra Streams Institute. It's late autumn, and these young composers are about to experience a unique and wondrous event, the spawning of Chinook salmon on the Yuba River. But will interpreting this experience through music deepen their knowledge and appreciation? Kids learn better and are more fascinated with their subject matter when they can see how it really how relevant it is to the rest of their world. And I think that the one thing that sometimes is missing in that in our traditional way of educating children is that sense of rele relevance. Like, what does this mean to me? How, why is this meaningful to me? What do salmon create down here? And has anybody heard of the name of what they're creating? They're creating a nest-like feature known as a red. And that's R-E-D-D. -D. So the red is not- For the Sierra Streams Institute, this will be a first taking a bunch of music students on a rafting trip down the Yuba River. So what we're going to see, we're going to see the females. Basically what they're going to be doing, they're going to be laying flat on the gravels, and they're going to be popping their tails up, creating a vacuum, which is going to pick the gravels up, and they're going to move with the current. Stroke and... Each stage that the salmon goes through has um, various rates of, of population decline for the salmon. Do you see how the, that white water is forming right there, right there where there's rocks? And all this area is pretty turbulent. When the water is more turbulent, more oxygen from the air gets dissolved into the water. And so if there's more oxygen in the water, then the eggs will definitely uh, be healthier and, and have more success. I come from a very scientific background and am working with this incredible music organization and am seeing what can happen when two organizations that have uh, different missions that are complementary can work together. When they hatch, Dan's gonna come around, he's gonna show you kind of the progression. The eggs actually start with uh, an eye spot, um, which forms, and then 
they'll hatch. Okay. So they'll be Alvin. And so I think that curiosity is a huge common theme throughout science and music. And that leads to creativity. They're going to have to fend for themselves at that point. Oh, there's a fish. Yeah. Oh, just darted right through the water. Yep. An active That's male cool. fighting off his opponents. Oh, oh, whoa, I see it. It's the beeping call. <laughs> This station is all about salmon food. What does it need to find for food? Yeah, macaron vertebrates, awesome. And they are food for fry and for young salmon before they journey out to the ocean. Oh my God. Science can be challenging, but it can also be fun. The essence of this is about inspiration and experimentation, looking at things in a different way, incorporating what they're learning into, into their music. So I think it, it just seems like it's working, not feeling like it's some foreign thing that they're doing anymore. It's something that they're incorporating into their bodies and their minds. As we go through today, we're going to be sampling for benthic octave in the street. A cold January morning on a local creek can test any teenager's respect for nature and bugs. That's an amazing that's mayfly. Thing. That's beautiful. Oh. Yeah, I just found that. Oh, wow. Well, we know this one's a stonefly right here, and we found lots of stoneflies today. Stoneflies are really sensitive to pollution. And so, a connection is made. Insects, salmon, and a healthy river. Right now, we're on this really flat area. And can anyone guess what this flat area might look like when there's a huge storm and lots of water coming down the river? Like tall grass. Tall grass. Flood. Flooded. Yeah, that's because we're standing on a floodplain right now. So we're planting all of these plants that have leaves on them, and those leaves block the sun and shade the water. And cooler water is better for fish. Yep, there's a rock right here. So that's they yeah. did a fantastic job. They planted over 150 plants, and they're all thriving right now. And um, we'll hopefully see major improvements in the coming years. It's now late spring. These kids have seen the salmon spawn, studied their food, and now will measure the health of their nursery, the river. Be like all the way under. It's all about science, but also it's all about music. Okay, so water temperature was 12.6. The goal of this program would be to have the young composers have a greater appreciation for the Yuba watershed and understand how interconnected everything is and walk away with something that is meaningful to them, that can inspire them in their music. One, two, happy birthday to you. Music in the mountains is where the music happens. Music appreciation, music history, listening, conducting, theory, harmony, sight singing, uh, dictation, and composition. All right, close. Mark Vance and fellow composer Jerry Grant teach 
and inspire. Yeah, we're stomping now. And so instead of just focusing in on music as, as one particular subject, composition as one particular subject, now they're thinking outside that box a little bit. And they're realizing that everything's connected, which is big thinking for teenagers, I think. Even though music is their common interest, these teenagers are as different as any group of young people. Mark knows them all. For example... I've known Toby for years, and I've seen him really develop over the years and grow. As dedicated as he is to piano, Toby's been thinking about the river. The water is kind of the common thread, and it just seems so obvious that a river, you know, a large source body of water would be a, such a communal ground for every kind of species. Kian is special in so many regards. He uh, maybe has more music coursing through his veins than any of the other students. I think he completely lives for music. Kian is all about music, but there's much more to his world. Um, just how like important our, our world is and how important nature is and just we need to respect it and take care of it while we have this beautiful planet. I grew up always going to the river and it's just been a very special place to me. I'm so grateful that this county has it. I hope you get that measure. <laughs> what I like about Alyssa is that she is so passionate about art and music as well as science and math. Science is a big part of my life. I think that it's really great to understand the world that we you know, live in and come from. I think that astronomy is a one way of doing that, physics and understanding kind of those fundamentals of you know, what's really happening in our world. I want to see if Saturn is out tonight. N51. Elissa is curious about the world around her, and that world includes art. Both science and art are, are important to kind of like humanity and getting to a higher up understanding of where we come from. One of the special things about Caroline is that she has been playing piano for years and years and years, and she has this lovely, strong piano background. And so you can hear that in her music. This year, our inspiration was basically handed to us, and that's not a bad thing at all. It was a great thing, because, I mean, like, what better inspiration could you find than sitting on the river in a raft with the rapids and the salmon are jumping out of the water? It's basically, like, you know, a composer's heaven, paradise. It's very peaceful to be around, to kind of have that raw force or energy. For some reason, I, I find peaceful. I mean, I learned a lot about the life of a salmon and everything. The drive of the salmon to do what they need to do to spawn in the river, I didn't really understand that as the single reason for their existence. I think that that is a really broad idea of what life is like. Looking at those truths and taking that apart with the music and kind of uh, objectifying it with music. You can talk through music. That's the octave above, okay? That's considered the range of the horn. And then these to talk through music, Young composers have to learn the language, the voices, the instruments. Hey, that's what makes horn playing difficult. To hear an instrument is one thing. To compose music for it means understanding how it works. I really enjoyed the harp demonstration that we had, and I'm actually writing for harp in my piece. His name is Matoshi. He was so passionate about what he was talking about, 
and his explanations of you know how to play the harp I mean I felt like I had a way better understanding of you know what the harp can be used for I think it's made them think deeper about the music and really telling a story and so they're writing specifically around their experiences sort of like the course of the day like the whole day yeah I mean is, this, is that is that what we're trying to do is yeah, this like like going to be a range of the day yeah or? only like writing for the salmon but also the whole experience like it was just like a really fun experience uh that that whole whole genetic cycle you know at the end of their life when they're also you know having seen the, the salmon spawning where it's the same movement just you know much bigger i have this part it slows down and i want to encapsulate big blue water that's like miraculous that they made it A month and many versions later, musical ideas now come to life in a trial run with professional players. Welcome Teeny Tiny Orchestra. You're gonna meet 10 of the young composers from the Young Composers Program who have composed pieces based on a science curriculum that they've studied with the Sierra Streams Institute. And so these pieces are inspired by that experience. These pieces will be performed with a fuller orchestra at Summerfest. So do we have the right mood that you're looking for? Alyssa, is we getting the right mood? You want to kind of yes. beginning. Uh, no, Just nice. nudge. Okay, first good, everyone. Uh, uh, They're really exploring all the different colors that, that an orchestra has. You have all these wonderful subtle shadings. It's like having the big box of crayons where you've got 150 different colors now all of a sudden. Yeah, they're not, they're not long. They're not, not quite so fluid. But. It's really beneficial for the professionals to work with the young composers because they see the work being created and evolving and they're part of that and they're a lot more excited about performing it. I think it just continues, yeah. You want to slide in there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Young creative minds need room to grow. They need encouragement, support, and people who care. There is a whole world just waiting to bloom. About like that? Yeah. <laughs> Bravo. The sound of the river itself, you can draw so much from that. Like I was, I really thought that the sand, like the salmon's instinct and drive, that was what I was just like so impressed by the, their fearlessness to, and yeah, that's what I wrote mine about. At the end of the day, like the river is so constant and it's like, it's always there. I think especially for us. Yeah, I just love how like, how many different elements of the river are. There's like the really intense part, like the rapids or there's the kind of like, slow, just like slow moving water with the like this. nice peaceful, yeah. yeah. We've got the peaceful water here and then it kind of gets a little more intense down there. It goes really well with the idea of music. It kind of takes you somewhere. Oh yeah. And the river, kind of with life, there's slow parts, fast parts, turbulent parts, and yeah. music can encompass the same idea. It's like, you know, I wrote a piece about the magicalness of the river yeah, exactly. and I, I kind of soak it all in. It's kind of like an adventure and like the music is almost like a map and we're composing this map for the musicians to go like explore the music. You know we kind of emotionally distance ourselves from each other and being able to have a medium that allows you to so directly connect with an, someone else mm -hmm. as composing music and having it performed and having them hear it I think is really important. Um, our society has this weird thing about touch we don't like we don't like people touching us and we don't like to be like close to other people it's really weird but i feel like music is like it's like touching yeah what happens when art and science combine in the creative minds of young composers this is what happens
The river is kind of a sanctuary for myself and for Alyssa too. We like to go there just to sort of clear our heads. Now, every time I go to the river, I look at it in a totally different way because it, this is where it all happens. It's the setting for this amazing process that the salmon go through. For more information or to purchase an extended DVD version of this program, visit musicinthemountains.org.